What's up, Dolphins fans? This is Nick Roloff here at Dolphins Today. And on today's show, before day two of the NFL Draft, we're doing a little bit of a day two mock draft for Miami, as well as some targets that I'd like to see Chris Greer and Mike McDaniel go up and get in the second round of the NFL Draft. Obviously, if we just go back to what happened last evening, Chop Robinson, the edge out of Penn State, was the selection for Miami at pick 21. I have kind of come around to the pick. If you watched last night's videos, I was a little harsh on the selection. But after watching more highlights and film of his bend, his quickness, his first step, I can confidently say that him as that fourth edge rusher alongside Jalen Phillips, Bradley Chubb, and Shaq Barrett from free agency, well, that will be a very dynamic quadrant of pass rushers. But there are still a lot of positions that Miami needs to fill on this roster. I think number one is still offensive guard. Number two is interior defensive line after the departure of Christian Wilkins in free agency. Offensive tackle can still be addressed. You don't know what the futures of Austin Jackson and Teron Armstead are. Wide receiver with that third spot. And then safety. I think that is a need because Anthony Weaver likes to run a lot of different looks defensively. And you could see him coming from a Raven scheme that goes 3-3-5, which would implore three corners, two safeties, or three safeties, two corners. And I think that third safety position behind Jordan Poyer and Javon Holland could really be beneficial for Miami. Going into day two of the NFL draft, they only have one pick as of right now. That would be in the second round, number 50. Now, I will say there are some rumors out there that Miami could be looking to trade up into the early portion of the second round. There was also some rumors out there late last night that Chris Greer tried to get back into the first round and actually had a discussion with the Baltimore Ravens for pick number 30. You wonder what prospect they were eyeing in that potential trade up, but the rumors will not go away. And I actually have a really good trade idea that someone else suggested that I wanted to share with you guys on Miami potentially trading up in just a second. But make sure you are subscribed to the channel because we will have a full breakdown of every single Miami Dolphins draft pick. We did it yesterday. We'll have it today in day two, whether they make one pick, maybe they two. And then they have four day three three picks as well. We'll have you covered with every name called by the NFL for the Miami Dolphins, as well as grades and UDFA tracker as well. So make sure you hit that sub button. Uh, before we get into my day two mock, I do think there is a fun trade idea where I could see happening for Miami. And it could be with the Titans. The Titans pick at 38. And if Miami is serious about trading up into the early portion of the second round, 38 is a very nice spot for them to get a potential top guy on day two. The Titans do not have a 2025 third round pick. Miami has three. So they can get rid of one of those thir three third round picks next year to move up from 55 plus that third to get to number 38. I think that could be a good deal for Miami. But hypothetically, if Miami stayed put at pick 55 and just let the board fall to them, I think Braden Fisk is someone that I would be very happy with and who I mock to Miami on this day two NFL mock draft for the Dolphins. The defensive tackle for Florida State checking off number two on my positions of need for this Dolphins roster. You keep him in Florida. Uh, obviously, listen, there might be some bad Blood between Miami Hurricanes, if you're a Hurricane fan, and the Florida State Seminoles. Uh, but I think this would be a great Christian Wilkins replacement. And I hate to keep on just like looking for his replacement, but after he left for the Las Vegas Raiders in free agency on that massive $110 million deal, there's a big void left in that middle of the Dolphins defensive line. I think he would be perfect. He is a really athletic guy. He tested very very well at the nfl combine um there is a little bit of a question on his run stopping ability but he is pretty solid at getting after the pass rusher from the interior and if you are a nfl quarterback the hardest pressure to face is coming from the interior because you can't step up into the pocket and deliver a throw you have to you forced to get flush out of the pocket which guess what? That's where Jalen Phillips, Bradley Chubb, and Chop Robinson come into play. 
Dane Brugler of The Athletic has a third-round grade on him, the 71st overall prospect in his mind. I think he's worth a second-round pick if they stayed put at 55, ironically enough, his jersey number. Brugler's little note on Fisk is that he doesn't have a deep arsenal of counters if he doesn't win early in his pass rush set, but he already has a professional mindset, and his twitchy urgency and steady play strength will translate well to the pro game. I couldn't agree more. And... When I talk about Christian Wilkins' replacement, what was one of the things that Christian Wilkins was so good at? Well, it was his athleticism, his twitchiness, and he was really just such an athletic freak for someone of his size. And to get maybe not someone as athletic as Wilkins, because that's going to be hard to replicate. I mean, he was a first-round pick for uh, what we're talking here. But Fisk is someone who can be that athletic defensive lineman who gets pressure from the interior that Miami just lost in free agency. You got a different prospect in mind, though. Who should the Dolphins draft in round two of the NFL draft? Let me know who you think Miami should target on day two. And coming up in just a bit, I got five prospects outside of Bryden, or Braden Fisk excuse me, that I'd like to see Miami target. And my top five players available for Miami, and they are ranked one through five. Listen, they're not, if you just put them in a vacuum, they'd be different, but for the Dolphins is how I have them ranked. I want to preface that before we get into it. But the Dolphins did make a pick yesterday. That would be Chop Robinson, the 21st overall selection, the edge out of Penn State. And you could actually order his jersey right now when you go to chatsports.com slash chop jersey. Robinson, I'm excited to have him on the team. Uh, don't know what number he's going to wear just yet in the aqua and orange, but when that is officially decided, they will ship that jersey out to you. You can grab it right now at chatsports.com slash chop jersey. Welcome in Chop Robinson to Miami by getting his jersey. All right, let's get to the Roly Big Board now. Number one, without a doubt, is Jerzon Newton, a.k.a. Johnny Newton, the defensive lineman from Illinois. Now, obviously, you're not drafting Fisk and Newton because they play the same position, but this is in that hypothetical trade up from 55 up into the top 30 or top 40 picks in this draft. Newton, I thought, was a first-round pick. I actually had him as my top guy alongside Graham Barton when Miami was on the clock at 21, and if the Dolphins were able to still get him in round two, that would be a steal. I'm a big fan of Newton's game. I think everybody in the chat sports offices actually agree that he is the Brian Branch of last year who the Lions scooped up on day two. Where it's like, how did he end up coming here? He should have been a first-round pick. Why is the NFL dumb? He's a stud in the NFL. Hopefully he's wearing the Dolphins uni next season. Number two is Jackson Powers Johnson, interior offensive lineman out of Oregon. And like I mentioned, I really wanted Graham Barton out of Duke because he could fill that right guard position for Miami after they lost Robert Hutt in free agency. Um, they didn't take him, and he went 26 to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Powers Johnson, many believed he was going to be a first-round pick as well, center, but he can play the two guard spots as well in the National Football League. The only concern with him is his injury history. He has a lot of history with concussions, which is a little scary, but if the Dolphins feel comfortable with his medicals, trading up to grab him would be an excellent decision as well. Now, this one is more of a guy that Miami could stay here and take at 55 if the board falls that way, but it's another interior offensive lineman, Cooper Beebe, out of Kansas State. I hate to keep on beating a dead horse here, but defensive tackle and offensive guard are the two biggest positions. You need to protect your franchise quarterback, Tua Tagovailoa, and the best way to do that is to ensure that interior offensive line. I like Robert Jones. I don't love him. I think they could really look for an upgrade there, and an early pick on day two of the NFL draft could go a long way for the Miami Dolphins. Two more prospects to look at for Miami, but... We are going to be live on Chat Sports once again for day two of the NFL Draft. So make sure you are subscribed. If you see this thumbnail, click on it. Come hang out with the Chat Sports crew. We were live yesterday. Shout out to Chad Jones. Shout out to Dolphin City. Shout out to Brian Acock for coming around and showing some love and donating to the channel. Uh, not going to be live today, but we will have breakdowns of every pick. For the Dolphins, if you want it for the entire NFL, Chat Sports is the place for you. Number four is Adonai Mitchell, the wide receiver out of Texas, and a lot of people know him as A.D. Mitchell. And if you just asked me to rank these prospects, as I prefaced a little bit earlier, 
Like, not for Miami. I think A.D. Mitchell is right behind Jarzon Newton as the second best player available in the draft. Cooper DeGene is up there as well. But for Miami, I don't think wide receiver is as big as a, of a need as people like to make it seem. Yes, the wide receiver three position needs to be filled. Jalen Waddell and Tyree Kill are not enough. There needs to be another guy in that room. But I don't think I would be willing to trade up to take A.D. Mitchell. I don't anticipate him falling to 55. Now, it's a different story if he's there at 55 for Chris Greer. If he's there at 55, just take the pick and run with the value and create the best wide receiver room in the NFL. But this is a guy that is going to be very talented, could help Miami a lot, but I'm not trading up for him, which is why he's number four on my list. And then if they wanted to go the offensive tackle route to get some uh, insurance for Armstead and Austin Jackson, Kingsley Suamatia, the offensive tackle out of BYU. I'd expect his name to be called relatively early on day two. I'd be shocked if he fell past pick 41, if I'm going to be honest. But if Miami ultimately wants to get another offensive lineman who maybe they view him as someone who could play inside and then kick out to offensive tackle in a couple of years to replace Jackson or Armstead, Suamatia out of BYU is someone I have my eyes on for Miami as well. All right, that's going to do it for today's video. Day two mock with me taking Graydon Fisk as well as some other prospects out there. Do not be surprised if the Dolphins trade up into the early portion of round two to get one of those top prospects that slid out of round one. If they do that, we will come with a video breaking down the trade and who they selected. So hit that sub button, and I'll see you later tonight with the Dolphins breakdown of day two.